Why is there a foot in my room? <clears throat> there are actually three feet in your room. There are actually, there's five feet in your room. Mine, yours, and that one. What are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about? Cleats. Professional as ever. <laughs> Doing a hole in the wall. Yeah, it's real noisy. Yeah. Doesn't he know we're trying to film bike for cheap? I need to set up my cleats for the first time ever. How do I do it? Cleat is the part, uh, usually a plastic part, the component that adheres to the bottom of the shoe. It clips into the pedal. It allows to keep your foot fixed in in one position uh, in, in relation to the pedal. Uh, it is one of the single most important changes to be made in bike fitting. We find that there's quite a lot of myths surrounding cleat location and how 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 it's how the cleat is set up re in relation to the foot. So I think if we kind of start with the, the, the fore aft location of a cleat. Um, now, first and foremost, most cleats have a, um, a, a central marker which de designates the, the center of the pedal axle. So on this Shimano, uh, it's designated by this little notch here on the bottom of it. Um, a look Kio has a similar marking. Um, so this basically is slap bang in the middle of the center of the pedal axle. The first myth that I want to dispel is that this area should be slap bang in line with the center of the first metatarsal. First metatarsal, it's the largest of, of, the, of the five metatarsals that you tend to possess. Um, it's generally the strike point, takeoff point from a running perspective. It's just generally a, a more solid point. It's quite easy to find. It's usually renowned, known as the ball of the foot. Like I say, we are usually looking, a lot of the information you read online talks about um, aligning the center of the cleat with the ball of the foot. Firstly, it creates quite a lot of torsion put through the front of the foot. Um, and that tends to transfer up through the uh, the knees, the hips, and the pelvis. Um, to the to that extent, we've found that with certain brands of shoes, we've come to associate with knee problems, saddle issues, foot issues. So I think if if you're ever in doubt, a lot of, one thing I say to a lot of my customers is, if you're ever in doubt, take the cleat as far back on the shoe as it'll possibly go. You can do no harm by taking the cleat too far back. It will it won't do anything. It won't cause you any any problems. So I think that's that's really one of the the first myths we want, I wanted to spell about, about, cleat, about cleat location. So one way of understanding where the cleat is in relation to your foot is to put the shoe on, maybe mar uh, apply some, some masking tape or some white electrical tape is what we use, um, find your foot inside the shoe and mark up that first metatarsal, the middle of it, all right? And we're then going to, I, I tend to set the cleat between 20 and 30 mil behind that first metatarsal if I had to give you a, a, a range. Now, obviously, not obviously, but the bigger the foot, the further back we want it. That being said, I have set it as far back as 40 mil. Really, what, what we want to do is get a lot of the uh, pressure away from the front of the foot. In, in certain instances, I've taken the cleat further back in an individual that is suffering with, with foot issues, for example, uh, or if they have, uh, if they're suffering some sort of ailment like a, um, uh, Morton's neuroma, trying to get some, get, I'm just basically trying to get the pressure off as far away from that, that forefoot region as possible. This is kind of why there isn't really a, a fundamental guide, there isn't a, 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 a rule for, for, for cleat location, but generally speaking, uh, it's, it's a lot safer to run the cleat further back because it gets it away from this point. And furthermore, it takes the, it reduces the lever of the shoe in the foot. So if you think about, you've got uh, the ankle cluster, subtalar complex, which is generally a pretty unstable um, joint because it moves in so many different planes. Now, if you take the cleat further and further towards that joint, essentially what you're doing is you're reducing the length of the lever. Now, some of you might think, well, more leverage equals more power. No, it doesn't, not when you've got a human, squishy human being attached to it. The point I'm making here is actually it tends to improve stability through that region, all right, which in turn refers up through the knees, the hips, the pelvis. To that end, we have found that we can uh, eliminate issues like knee pain, saddle problems, even in your case, iliotibial band symptoms, just by taking the cleat further back. All right. So, and and actually, we found through pressure mapping that it can heavily influence 
how you interact with the saddle. And I don't really know why this is, but when we take the cleat further back, occasionally you find that the rider sits actually further back into the saddle. So something a lot of people have problems with is uh, just general uh, rotation and, and, the, and the stance adjustment of the cleat. Now, I guess one thing that I've, I've got to iterate here is that if you change your cleat location, and you then end up with some sort of pain, it usually means that the that your position is pretty bad in the first place. So for example, if your saddle is way too high, something we all know I've got a big bee in my bonnet about, and you're in hyperextension of the leg, you end up with your knee being misaligned and overextended, which means it's run out of ways to absorb this function, which basically means that you make a slight change to the cleat and all hell breaks loose. Um, it doesn't mean the cleat location is bad, it just means that your position's shit. You don't want to be running them completely wonky, right? But like, how many people. To be honest with you, I would run the cleat almost completely straight unless the rider requires it. Most cleats have float in them, and I would discourage anybody from using a fixed cleat. Again, that's something for another time. Some float is always a good thing. I tend to prefer, to, to be honest with you, between the Shimano blue and the yellow, I can't really tell much difference personally. I tend to preference grey over red with look on the grounds that the red tends to have quite a lot of float. Uh, but generally speaking, I would set the cleats completely straight. All right. So as a starting point, something to consider would be to run the cleat quite far back and in the middle from a medial lateral perspective. All right. One of the things that uh, most people might struggle with is how to set the, the, the cleat up into, from a stance perspective. Now, if you're a bigger rider, for example, or you have a physiological trait known as tibial varum, it's basically uh, where the, the lower leg slightly bows, you're gonna need a wider stance. Now, this is where bike fitting gets counterintuitive because actually what you need to do is push the cleat inboard to get the foot away from the bike. So if you think about the cleat as a fixed entity and you're gonna move the foot around it, all right? So we're gonna move the foot away from the bike. What that's doing is it's increasing your stance, it's getting your feet further away from the bike, all right? If you're a smaller individual, small women, for example, individuals with slighter pelvises, or potentially if you're a valgus knee individual where basically you're not need, where your knees kind of come together, uh, you might need it the other way around. Bear in mind, this is general, this is generalization stuff. There is no substitute here for going and getting a bike fit and having, you know, having someone um, assess you properly. Occasionally, if you have an individual that is severely impinged with the hips or their physiology dictates it, we might need to add a certain amount of rotation. Now, riders that tend to prefer being pigeon-toed, i.e. with their toes turned in, I've actually found that can be a symptom of um, having insufficient stance, having your feet too close together. Generally speaking, don't, don't be afraid to, to experiment with it. Remember like I said, there's, there's not really a huge amount of harm you can do by taking it too far back. I think as long as you have the cleat relatively straight and you haven't got it, you know, angled at a really obscure angle, I think you, you, you're gonna be okay. Next episode, we probably ought to follow on from this. We probably ought to talk about shoes and shoe brands and what. I mean, I, I guess everyone's always wondering why I have a preference for this brand. <laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> we can't be rude not to gave me a jump. We'll, we'll move into we'll move into shoe fitting at a later point. Uh, but but shoe choice is incredibly important. Cleat location varies from shoe brand to shoe brand. Even the rotation of a, of a, of the cleat location on shoes differs. Other than that, if you have any questions regarding cleat location, stick them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. And that is Bike for Tuesdays filmed on a Wednesday. It'll come out on a Thursday. Oh. Uh.